Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about Dell PowerEdge R300 server memory upgrade kits and how to properly load and configure the system. Let's get started. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R300. If you find anything today's video useful, do us a favor, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, we'll top in. Uh, for starters, this is a much older machine. It takes DDR2 memory. There are six DIMM slots inside. Uh, you can only use two different speeds. It's 667 and 800 megahertz. Uh, as far as the different sizes, you can use a one gig, two gig, or four gig memory module. No, unfortunately, eight gigs are not compatible with this machine, which we get asked quite a bit. Can I use eight gigs? No, I wish you could. Unfortunately, you can only use four gigs, which means that the max for this machine is 24 gigabytes using six four gigs and there's only one type of RAM and that is ECC registered also known as an RDIM uh, and the uh, max speed you can do for that would be 800 megahertz okay all right so now we know a little bit more about the uh, memory itself let's go ahead and hop in I'll show you how to actually configure it the different uh, memory channels but before we do I'm gonna grab my ESD gear because really you never want to be inside a machine without protecting it so I'm gonna grab my gear and I will be right back thank you all right, we have our gear on, so we're safe to open the machine. First things first, make sure the latch is set to unlock. Pop open the tab, lift up the top, and boom, we are in. Okay, one of the things I want to note before we get in, um, obviously you're going to have to remove the air baffle to have access to the DIMMs and to the CPU if you were wanting to uh, you know, upgrade the CPU as well. Um, when you put this back in, it's easy to forget that there's a cable that is actually running over, uh, that's part of the edge of this air baffle. So I just want to point that out so that when you're putting it back in, you just need to make sure that uh, this cable is actually over this area as opposed to under it, okay? So just a simple thing. Um, so as we discussed, uh, there are six DIMM slots inside. Uh, there are three memory channels and two DIMMs per memory channel. This is the start of channel one, start of channel two, and the start of channel three. Okay, so if you were only going to put in three DIMMs, this is the proper way to install them. Okay, but for a mach machine this old, there's no point in only having three DIMMs in here. You need to put in six, four gigs. You need to max this thing out. Uh, I, I mean, really, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about that, in my opinion. If you're running a machine this old, you need to max it out and need to have 24 gigs in here. Okay. Um, First tip I got for you, make sure all your tabs are open. Before I get going, I always like to put all my tabs open so that way when I go to install the module, I'm not fumbling around. I don't have uh, an issue with the tabs potentially blocking it. Uh, so that's just the first thing that I recommend. Second thing that I recommend um, is to pay attention uh, to this notch right here, also known as a key. This key is very important because this key is not perfectly centered. So when you go to install this module, if you have it flipped the wrong way, what you could end up doing is actually damaging the uh, the leads or damaging the, the slot itself, which means you might have to replace the motherboard, which is, is not something you want to do. So just a simple thing, just make sure you line it up properly. So in this case, it's going to be like this. Okay, my next tip, you'll notice that I'm not holding the module. The module's in there. However, the module's not properly seated, or it's not fully seated, I should say. You need to hear these two clicks. Listen to these clicks. Click one click two. So you'll notice that this tab is fully in and these tabs are still sticking out because these tabs have now fully pushed the module down. If you saw something like kind of like that for instance and all these other tabs were in then you knew this module is not fully seated okay and you need to push on it and make sure you uh, get it correctly seated. It's a real common error. I tell people that all the time. I don't care if you've been doing it 20 years or if this is your first day on the job. Uh, it's an easy mistake. We've all done it. I've done it. Uh, so you know, it's just something to watch out for and something to be uh, extra safe with so that when you're installing, uh, you're not running into that issue, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and hit that fast forward and finish installing. All right, so you can see that it was just that simple. So if you're at home and you're using this machine, I highly recommend making sure that you upgrade it and have the max uh, capability. Uh, now we're gonna put the air baffle in, and as I discussed, when you're putting the air baffle back, you need to make sure that you put the cord over it, okay? That's the only uh, potential snag. Pop it back in, hey, super easy. Pop the top on, call it a day. Well, hey, if you made it this far, do us a favor and click that like and smash that subscribe. And do us a favor, if you're looking for any upgrades yourself, uh, email us at sales at cloudninjas.com. That's sales at, at cloudninjas.com. We'd sure love to help you out. Thanks for stopping by, guys.